Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last days of that there Europe. And I'm your host, Mr. Nikolai Buck, Haren Lover, but we talk about Equus Ferris Caballus. You approach a gate of a facility of sorts, one that runs along a tall chain link fence that stretches endlessly to where your eyes can see. It only took one glance for the soldier guarding the gate to get the signal to open the gate. The driver moves with your car inside. There's a bunker in the middle of the facility. The driver parks the car in front of its entrance that is guarded by two more soldiers who gives you a salute as you step outside of the car. You walk inside the building when one of them opens the door for you. As the doors behind you are closed, the room begins to dim as the light from the door is shut. You can see nothing except for an elevator waiting for you. You're in a, you enter the elevator. Press a few buttons and door closed. It's still pitch black inside the elevator. You wonder where the effing money you poured into this project went if they can't even install lights in this darn thing. The elevator stops and the door opens. The, door, the room beyond is unsurprisingly also unlit except for a dim light emanating from the center of the room. You approach a source of light in the darkness. What lies in front of you is what the scientists call a gaming computer. It is a piece of technology decades ahead of the 60s that the project is somewhat acquired. On the keyboard, it was lit with a rainbow color, an RGB keyboard, the boys called it. You tap in the following words. Pinkie Pie is best pony 1913. A synthetic voice sparked out of the machine as it rolled to life and uttered the words, Welcome to the project, Ferris. President Nixon. Cool. Charting a course. Oh, it's over here. Look at that. The room they were holding the meeting in was small, with most of the space dominated by the large table in the center. Around it, Bakar, Mleka, Ponia. Ponyina, Ponyina, Bloiker, and Tomsky sat staring at a detailed map of the Far East. The map was about as detailed an approximation of the borders of the region's various governments and warlords as one could get in the situation, which wasn't saying much. Bloiker had been speaking, and Bakharin re realized that he had been lost in thought, staring at the dozens of towns and cities on the map. That is why securing a unified front line is of paramount importance. Both our manpower and pony power reserves are too small to staff multiple active fronts, Bakharin and the other ministers nodded. Pony. Ponyina added under Bleiker's point, the fleet in Kamchatka is also ideal because of the past edges of the Soviet Union. While Yumashev and his men will surely be somewhat disillusioned with the past, we can surely remind them of their loyalties and convince them to join a new cause. Bakharin saw nothing objectionable in their statement, and the rest of his ministers nodded along in agreement. Bakharin addressed the entire table. Well, there's no competing or competing opinions, then I elect that we should send a delegation to Kamchatka and speak with Yumashev about joining their harmonious union. All in favor, Bakharin raised his own hoof and saw two hooves and two hands raised in a unanimous agreement. It seemed a decision had been reached. For a while, then to Kamchatka we go, and a new entry in the project. One of our peoples working on the project fairs in the Grey Hills facility has submitted a new audio log into the main archive of the project, has been consolidated with other logs in your personal database, and is ready for viewing. A new entry for the miscellaneous characters can be viewed. Let's take a look, shall we? Very cool. And what is this? Oh, entry one. Um, if you want to write about Theodore North and this entry, please go right ahead. End of recording. Dr. Hark. If you want to write about that as well, please go right ahead as well. And there we go. Dr. Stinson. Oh, all the way up here, huh? Why was it already open? I didn't even open this earlier, so. And there you go. All right, entry so far, so good. But we're currently we're doing looking outwards, of course. Foundation has been laid, the work has been done. Our society of harmony has been created, but still only one of many if all rushes to come together in friendship. We're going to have to start looking beyond our borders and expanding. We've never had neighbors, but the decision has been made that the first stop will become Chaka, home of the remnants of the Pacific Fleet. Let's take the first step forward. I think I read this both these yesterday, so if we read this again, please go right ahead. But let's see what happens, if anything. Because we still get 1.13 political power every single day, which is pretty good. Um, we need to amp up a group recruitment, of course, but there's other things we need to do as well, like get more factory output. Where are we at right now? Uh, I could use more construction speed, in all honesty. Oh! Provide ponytarian aid. Power? Oh! Inflation will go up, but our GDP growth will go up. Oh my goodness. Crystal Mines of Blag Blagovzhenshank. Well, we don't own those two. Ooh, that's really good to do, actually. Expand the port of Magadan. Ooh, next phase of economic development. I right, think that's ooh. Study them. More construction speed. I think these are pretty much all the same. I like this one a lot. Econ phase one. Oh yes, please. Only three three crystals. That's fine. We can close out of this one for now. Um, we don't have a lot to spend their political power, which is okay-ish. But then, if this one ready, the army will be removed once their enemies in the parties have been defeated. Uh, more attack and defense for 540 days. Not bad. And then speak to the masses or support up-to-date intelligence. We'll do this one. 
Uh, we've had a hard struggle in our quest to defeat the forces of disharmony. Over the weeks and months, we've encountered constant hardship, but luckily we have our friends to help us. When we work together <clears throat> and talk through our problems, we can figure out what we need to accomplish our goals. In this case, our friends are clear on what we need. Guns. We need lots and lots of guns and an army who can wield them. Only by mastering the power of incredible state-sanctioned violence can we make our world safe for friendship and harmony. A horse walks into a barge. As Buck Harn walked through the doors of Yumashev's office, his eyes lit with an uncharacteristic energy. Is it really you, Nikolai? The last time I saw you was Moscow in 1945. I never thought I'd see you again, and now you're a horse. Well, a certain kind of horse, I suppose. A pony, Buck Harn uh, corrected him. I see. Well... Your reputation precedes you, you Michelle continue. I've been hearing incredible reports all year. Magic, ponies, harmony, all sound a bit ridiculous to me, but here you are, Nikolai Bukharin. It's nice to see you too, Yumashev, but there is important business to attend to. With a very of his horn, Bukharin opened a folder on Yumashev's desk. Do you accept my offer for integration? Yumashev pushed away the folder. I read over your plans before you arrived. To be frank, I would decline such an offer from anyone but yourself. They're hopelessly idealistic or revisionist and frankly utopian. So you reject my bid, Bukharin asked. Oh, you must have paused in a moment of frustration. No, you are my chair opponent, and even now you must mean something. That must mean something. With these generous terms, I will aid you in the ceremonious union. For the first time since his entrance, Bukhar smiled. You won't regret this, Yumashev. You'll be helping Russia far more by my side than you could have ever helped it here. I hope you're right. Perhaps this is even possible. Over two decades, I've never seen the friendship and magic that you imagine, but these are strange times. After all, my chairman is a pony. Nice. But a couple of comments include, um, when the union collapses... But there is dual alicorns instead of the Russian tricolor and the Gorbachev biz banishes Yeltsin to the moon after an epic battle with the Kremlin. This is wholesome. Uh, another person, same person says, my faith in humanity has been restored. Someone else says, this is the most funniest and detailed crossover mod I've ever seen. Do you have any spare crystals for a bat pony comrade? Someone else says, what, will you eventually do the free people of Gaul and Red Flood? Eventually I will, but it's going to take time for them to update the mob. Someone else says, I've decided I shall embrace our harmonic communism and shall support our dear comrade Bakarin. Someone asks how to get the station. Just place Amalan at the beginning of TNL. And make sure you have the Easter egg on for the pony stuff. So, Someone says, we reached the, the degeneracy level, sh which shouldn't even be possible. And yeah. All hail the chair pony and the Minutemen need your help. Paint the fleet pink. The iron hulks that made up the old Pacific fleet were imposing to the eye. Sergei conceded as he shivered in the morning Siberian wind. Massive engineered creations still standing at the edge of the world. The mass work of dockyards long since fallen and disrepaired overtaken by Germans. For a moment his mind soared with thoughts of a proud Russian fleet defending the coast, but a quick shake of his head brought him back to reality. The nation had far more pressing matters than its navy, and the fleet which the Kamchatkin comrades had maintained was little more than pirate, pirate, pirate vessels with a quiet sigh. So I can consider how we would word the request to sell the fleet. Good morning, comrade. The clatter of hooves against asphalt alerted him to the approach of his equine partner. Blueberry, was it? Or was it Blueberry? He still had no clue as to how these ponies' names system work, especially those who chose to pick a completely different name after their transformation instead of using their old name like most do. These really are beautiful ships. I can't wait to get to work on them, she exclaimed with exuberance. Ah, Blue, we won't be working on them. I believe they should be sold, he mumbled. Hope we should get the hint. The cost of maintaining these old boats in comparison to selling them off is... Oh, come on, Sergei, she continued, lightly nudging his side with her hoof in a way that was much too friendly for his liking. Look at them, aren't they pretty? Wouldn't it be prettier if they were nice and shiny? Imagine what we could do with them. Throw parties, have gals, smash fascists. Her excitement, as grating as it was, did make him stop and think. With how shaky the Union was, perhaps even outdated fleet better than no fleet at all. They're all. You know what, Blue? You have a point. Uh, opinion stands with taking the money, not the fleet. Eh. I don't know the fleet, even though we're not going to do anything with this. These old pirate ships. It's still alright with me. Yeah, you Michelle, here's a job. Good luck with that. Don't die, and train until you die. We're ready to the army. But we also need to speak to the masses. But let's go to intelligence agency first. Up to date intelligence. Now the new entry, nice. Find yourself a copy of any basic map of the world and find that all the parts of Russia that haven't been scooped up by the fascist scum or imperialist dogs reside under one large black bob labeled Russian anarchy. <clears throat> While this does no justice to the many warlord statelets nestling atop the Union's bones, it makes sense given the fact that fixed borders are something of a suggestion in the anarchy. There are always small land grabs being made, being a skirmish under the nose of its previous occupier, and that makes life that much, that much harder. To combat this, it's about time we get our intelligence apparatus up to scratch and start getting up to date with new, fresh new reports on the border situation down south. It'll be an extra weight off our minds while planning maneuver, military maneuvers, knowing the maps we're using aren't as old as Comrade Bakarin. Yeah, a little bit. That, that they're dead. Oh, we have a yearly deficit, too. Oh, that's not a deal. Of course, we do have, like... Oh, I forgot about the Navy. It does cost money, too. One point two. Huh? Maybe we got that money. Oh, well, we'll expand. We'll, we'll all be fine. We'll be okay. Also, I didn't realize we could harmonify a contract, so we should probably do that once we get enough crystals again. 447, which isn't bad. Not bad. 
Speak to the masses. Gosh, we've been so caught up with all of our friends in the Presidium that we've forgotten about our responsibilities to the people. It's not fair that they should be kept in the dark about how our government operates and what it wants. They have every right to enjoy the harmony that's brought us so much joy. Let's fix this problem. Let's give a great big address so that everyone in Russia can participate in one harmonious union. Might as well try. I can't wait till that's done so growth will get better, power will get better. Oh my goodness. Right now, it's not looking too good. It's not bad. Get better, though. Speak to that there, them asses. New entry. And I'll look at that in just a moment. And I can't do that. Okay, so here we go. Entry one. Oh, crap. I don't know which ones. A lot of lag. There you go. And there you go, entry two. There you go. And then entry three. Whee! Alright, Captain Faros. And Dr. Solyov. 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 There you go. And, and then, opponents are ready. Oh boy, it's all coming together now. The army is ready to go. The people are putting up pretty flags and streamers. All the countries unite as one collective as a circle of friends. Now it's time to expand that friendship circle by force. We'll march southwards and liberate the people from their antipathy towards harmony. We shall shatter the chains of unneighborliness. We shall end the oppression that is loneliness. Liberals retain power, eh? Nice. Yeah, we're gonna need more army units. A bigger military. Alright, so with this, we can still do external investments, which I kind of want to do, actually. So, there you go. Where's the chair pony, huh? Well, aid walked awkwardly lowered the mic a few degrees as Bakaran prepared himself, the old chair pony being a bit shorter than the human who had introduced him. The air which pervaded the room. That he and the radio announcer occupied mixed somewhere between the reverence and discomfort, and the man's eyes constantly flicking over the unicorn, Bakarin had long grown accustomed to the staring. The waving of the host caught his attention, and he strained himself out with a deep breath and a sip of water. When was the last time he spoke to the nation? His announcement of the Soviet defeat, did that even reach across the country, or was that his last announcement instead of the retreat from Moscow, or was it... Live from Siberia, it is my deepest honor to present your old chairman and return once again, Nikolai Bakarin. The announcer spoke with authority, snapping Bokharin from his days. Good evening to all of you, former citizens of the Soviet Union. For those who remember my voice, I salute you. For those who have never heard of it, I welcome you. It is my deepest honor of my life to once again be granted the opportunity to speak to the people across the nation again. From Magadan to Moscow, our broadcast radiates. May it be heard by all of our people, wherever they are. Twenty years ago, the greatest shame fell upon our nation. The tanks and jackboots of Nazi menace rolled over our proud armies, and we failed to stop them. Since then, the territories of the old Union have been squashed and quashed under the fascism, and broiled in conflict are anarchic. It is my greatest shame that such a disaster was allowed to happen. I do not expect forgiveness. Instead, I promise rest restoration. We'll bring a new era of cooperation in Russia. We'll return our great nation to its glory. We shall free your people with the power of friendship and harmony. Glory to the Soviet Union, comrades. It is rising again. I think it went well. I'd say it went pretty darn well. A little bit of money as well, even though we still have more debt, which does suck. Should be okay for now, but still. Please, just no more debt. Still poor, working directed, of course. Oh, actually, we can lower this. So, how about just a little bit? Oh. Yuri Skolbelev. Lumidia Ivanikova. Konstantin Nikolaevich. Yes. Ponies at the ready. Uh, what do we have here? Well, that's not bad. Here's the research stuff, though. But not bad. Hey, 10% growth. Not enough, though. I really want to do that stuff, but... And get more research speed, because you can. Alrighty. We're playing green. Ooh. <clears throat> it is the unfortunate truth that we must resort to violence for the sake of spreading harmony to our neighbors in the Far East, as the region is real with the fascists and tyrants of all shapes with no hopes for a peaceful restoration. Therefore, these war plans shall be our means of officially dispatching the enemy and spreading harmony. Ponies at the ready. 
Both the ideals of harmony comes and recognize the concept of greed as the driving force of suffering and the cause of those undeserving rising power. The capitalistic state of Yakutia is no stranger to this, evident by reports of terrible working conditions by travelers, refugees, and our spies alike thanks to the clawing hands of the many oligarchs that control the nation. It's unacceptable for us to lie here sitting while the comrades and arms suffer under the oppression of capitalism thus. It was our duty to liberate the workers from their shackles and bless them with the grace of harmony. Nice. I wondered if we would have an easy enemy to beat first, so... That's no Firefly. It had been cute when he first caught him, Mikhail swore. A nice sunny day to break up the last few weeks of cold and rain, had, or the cloud and rain, and drawn the boy outside where he stumbled upon some sort of cartoonish blue bug in a village field, happily snoozing on a wheat stalk. With a small squeal of excitement, he had just cupped it in his hands and rushed it back home, enclosing it in a jam jar far older than he was. He spent an hour examining it fluttering about in there, occasionally dropping the little bits of grain which it devoured as fast as it could blink. He named his new pet Leibov. Leibov. Then after another trip to get some more grain, he'd come back home or come back home to see there's another two Liu Bobs. That stopped him in his tracks. Where did the second one come from? With some sense of primal caution, he carefully unscrewed the lid to drop in more grain. Within a moment, it was gone, practically plucked from his hand, and the two bugs coughed, and there were four. In a panic, he sealed the jar shut again, rushing towards the window, lifting it over his head to only find that Liu Bobs were no longer in his jar. In fact, he was no longer holding a jar. He looked up in confusion to see eight bug beasts floating above him. They seemed to be levitating in the air like hanging ornaments before rocketing towards the window, boring it through it quicker than he could believe and escaping into the open air. As they flew towards the fields, Mikhail noticed something which would rock him again with nausea. They duplicated again. Uh-oh. Pair of sprites. Feeding the hungry. Ooh. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Salvage what we can. Uh, though the swarming bugs have caused immense damage to crops and trees, incoming blizzards have forced them into hiding, giving a short time to chance, a short chance to stake stocks and recover. Teams of unicorns and earth ponies have been sent out to salvage whatever is possible and try to corral those pair of sprites into areas where they can be more easily culled. Send in the army. Firing a pair of sprites with guns is woefully ineffective. At best, only one or two are clipped, and at worst, the entire swarm finds a new target. However, by sending the army armed with coordinated fire tactics, air explosion artillery shells, and most importantly, flamethrowers, we can begin taking down the winged menaces in their layers before they have a chance to emerge and begin multiplying again. Nice. Let's go into that one. New entry in the project. Uh, check the project Ferris interface. There's number two. Cool. Reconciliation is magic. We to the lake by call the highest valor Salbans Bariat, uh, <clears throat> ASSR, born. A state born from revolution, or a revolt against the former masters on the other side of the lake, what remains of the president of the Supreme Soviet led by Genna Kyogoda. Uh, but Karin sees the conflict as futile. Communists in Russia must unite in harmony against a capitalist menace, not fight each other. <clears throat> With, uh, of show at each other of what constitutes right or wrong according to their ideals, we must stop this conflict and hope that they can unite to stand against tyranny together. Well, we'll see. Feeding the hungry. Preparations for potential famine have long been a part of our general long-term strategy, but dealing with a sudden emergency requires us to break into our stockpiles if we want any chance of feeding our people, of course. This means we'll be def infinitely less prepared for a real famine or other such strategy to prove that in the future any and all dealings with the other world must be done with the utmost caution. Nice. Another one, too. Also, if I miss one of these, please let me know in the comments below. I'll get to it in the next one, so... Debt. Not good. Poverty is getting worse. We're doing okay here? 2v1? They're kind of entrenched, which kind of does suck. Poverty change goes worse? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Growth? Oh, goodness. Stability? Oh, God. War support? Oh, God. Damage report? 80 to 100% loss of cereals, grains, and other food crops of all types. 15 to 30% loss of overall tree coverage. 67% of rural population, a transfer po rural population to a capital, though this is reversible. Uncountable rubles worth of property damage, and worst of all, 15 casualties from this entirely man made tragedy. Our central chain of command remains intact, as does government control in general. We have avoided a major famine. All this from the one fearful bug that happened and escaped out of a vodka crate. Should be getting a lot of army speed from this. Or not. Okay then. Where are the enemy divisions? Oh, there they are. 
We'll have to edit these divisions too by the time we're done with these guys. Industrial investments. Uh, market done. Increase the pony rate. More output. Nice. Damage report. And this can never happen again. Another outbreak of this type will, without any hyperbole exaggeration, end us. For too long we've been experimenting with the magic of monsters of the other world, without even bothering to take basic quarantine precaution. No longer, this will be a one-time mistake. Our strongest asset has always been the mine, and now we all apply it. Dr. Pole, huh? Let's keep them there for now. See what you can do. They don't. They're not that strong. Um, what are we looking at right, like right now? Well, we're doing okay. Now look at this. Valerie's boot throwed over plowed earth with laborious effort. Some of that was caution of stepping on something he'd rather not step on. Most of it was a 50-pound flamethrower digging into his shoulders. The contraption on his back was surely older than he and his comrades, a relic from the time when the Japanese threatened backwaters like this, and the Soviet armies were plentiful. And the fact that they had fuel for it all was all was a miracle in itself. Even then, though, the heavy dude had proven time and time over to be a crudely effective manner of wiping out the nest of these fant fantastical locusts, even though to say such solutions were crude was to falsely imply that there were any particularly civilized answers. Even so, he hoped that those who came before him, the ponies especially, had done the job of driving out the insects before his unit arrived. He didn't much fancy the idea of burning down the homes of a bunch of impoverished villagers, not that there were many homes left. The fact of the matter was that, save for the few shackles and disturbed patches of earth left, there was hardly any trace that there had been a village here at all. A few ponies pranced down. Would have been the main street, inspecting the damage where they could mark, could, and marking up losses which the state would have to replenish. A couple of shell shocked. Villagers stumbled through the remains, picking through soil for any trace of their belongings. The nearest to him was a mother standing off to the side, fiercely berating up her bawling child. Your father would be ashamed of you if he were here. Mikhail, all your crops are gone. Our home vanished. Our village in tatters. Mama, I'm sorry to know. I thought it was you're very lucky that Comrade Bakharin is so generous, or he'd be left in the forest for the wolves to eat. Now, never do this again, Valerie. Uh, the voice of one of the equine comrades startled him out of his eavesdropping with a turn. He looked to where she was pointing to a corpse of trees with the faint multicolored dots lazily swirling around it. The click of his flamethrower mast is quite side. Just another problem. Of course, this can never happen again, which is very good. But, recalibrate the harmonics? Ooh, more crystals are necessary. Finding them? Mm, monthly gain goes up by 10. Ooh. Decreases his decisions cost by 15%. Ooh. Oh. Recalibrate it. Um, I want to at least get recalibrate the harmonics. It's reasonable to conclude, after the recent disasters involving a portal, that something went really quite sort of wrong at some stage. Exactly what we won't know for sure until we look at into it, so it's time to literally go back to the drawing board. The mathematics behind our work should be redone, checked, double checked, and checked again, just for the heck of it. And with any luck, we won't run into any, any of the same issues. More crystals are necessary, though. The thought occurs if, that if we want a larger portal without instability issues, well, we're going to need more crystals. They're integral to whatever mechanisms are at play in this portal, and are even more integral now that we need to make a bigger one. Thus, not to put too fine a point on it, we're really going to have to, have to go and look for more crystals. A lot more crystals. And maybe we'll start working on some of our technologies. Some technologies may require you to progress further through the path to be researchable. Nice. And how are we doing over here? Doing okay? We're, of course, still at war, so struggling here just a wee bit. But enjoying ourselves nonetheless, in which you're not going to go that way. You're going to go here and take out Bodhi Bodayabo. Bodaybo. Bodaybo. Yes. Exactly, my thinking. We're probably fighting a river. Oh, we're using some humans too. They're not that strong. It's alright, though. It's all good. 84 stockpiled. Ooh, boy. Please, 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 more output. Anything else here? Industrial investments would be nice. Of course, once we take all these people out, we need core more stuff probably too. Finding them. Well, I've already covered this point. It's necessary to point out again that we really, really need to get a lot of bloody crystals right this moment. If we're going to do all that, the situation appears to be one necessitating us going out and finding more crystals because, not to beat a dead pony, just a hammer, huh? We really need more crystals. Really, really, really. Reconciliation is magic, of course. Oh, and they died. 
unearthed Yakutian crystals. In its raw form, the diamonds found are precious metals made usually for expensive jewelry, but the corporations and miners of these mountains couldn't see further than that, as they were missing the key ingredient to all this, pony magic. With enough exposure to pony magic, these precious diamonds can serve as conduits of magic with the same amount of efficiency as the magic crystals found in the north. We shall send the miners to collect these, and unlike the corporations that came before, we'll treat these workers well and give them the wage that they deserve in the name of harmony. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, let's do that immediately. And that costs political power instead of anything else. So, we're playing Brown. Amur. Magadan's probably the way we want to go, so. The state of Magadan is a corporate state under the leadership of Mikhail Mikovsky, another. A prominent breakaway of the Hobbin Three. Like the others, they wouldn't like the idea of harmony, let alone communism. Although they may be more moderate compared to others, he's no less a threat. Nice. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more divisions, and thicker divisions at that. Honestly, yeah, you might as well do that. What are we missing here? Equine equipment? Yeah, we need more equine equipment. Cool. Go ahead. So in phase one, we'll probably need more pony power, but we can come over here too. A little bit of debt. Maneuver War Strategic Theorem. Probably just go with Strategic Theorem again. I'm usually, that's the one I usually go with anyways, so I get a lot of defense anyway, so. It's all just in case. Actually, leg infantry, does that include ponies? Yeah, pon I guess I. Army effect, of course, that'll benefit everybody, right? Yeah, pony on hooves. Army defense, army. I may go ground, maybe go this way. We get a lot of defense over here. I won't have a lot of manpower anyways, so... I don't know, we'll try it. We'll go this way. Why not? Oh, dang it. Now we don't even have pony power. Well, we'll see. Where are we at for this one? Eh, yeah, construction speed is kind of low, but whatever. Finding them. We're finding the crystals. We've got plenty of the crystals we need for construction of the portal, but the conclusion of working with them is that they can stand to be a, lot, a little bit less rubbish. They're really not all that efficient for the task we're trying to accomplish here. Perhaps there's a way to refine them, just somehow like cutting them in different ways, for instance. We should give that a try in a few different ways to see what draws out the most efficiency from them. Inter interdimensional theories. The Brainiacs have done their usual spiel and come back to us with a conclusion that the parasprites that came through the portal are from an alternate dimension, completely different in many ways from our own. At the same time, nobody really has any idea of what that means. The matters of science are often a confusing one, and our scientists care, certainly don't make it any easier. We'll set the lab coats with the task of expanding on the theories and making it so we can actually understand the maddening scribbles they deliver to us. Of course, we had to, of course, uh, recalibrate the harmonics earlier, but putting theory into practice. With all the theory regarding poor technology and the other dimension laid out, it's time to come to the big question. What can we actually do about this? Are there methods of communicating with the other dimensions? Do they also know that we're there? Could perhaps utilize a portal to travel to the other worlds? The possibilities are endless, but it's all about time we start to hash out the practical goals as to what we can actually do. And yes, I do know. <sighs> we need more energy. We need a lot more energy. And we still need some more rifles as well, so... And those who we do seem to be doing okay. Um, what do we have here? They've done exploded, which is fine. Did that too. This looks really disgusting. Uh, do that. Keep these guys in place eventually. As we're literally just gunning for Magadan at this point. Well, that is a goal. We're out of pony power too, which of course sucks. But then we did get the reduction of costs for crystal spending. And we're cap of 550 right now. So, study crystal magic, of course. Magical construction methods, crystal powered workshops, feed the people, and our recruitment so we get 5,000 more manpower, pony power, because, well, by God, do we need it. Uh, if we can get there and get to Magadan soon enough, we should be okay. Port of Magadan Capture, you're going over that, please go ahead. Because I've done it plenty of times before. So, do they not capitulate now? What is going on? Sure, why not? Because you can. Building the gateway. We've done the theorizing on other worlds. We've actually made our crystals more efficient, and we've narrowed down our goals. Our scientific progress has greatly improved thanks to the powers of friendship and harmony. And the last step now is to build. We'll make a new portal. It'll be bigger and better than ever. Magic has made us stronger. We'll use its boons to find out what's truly on the other side. But from now, we gather the materials and set to work. I 
Oh, honestly, you should probably both go in and do that. Do your best. A little more pony power would be very nice. Occupied territories, local police, no. Civilian oversight. And use these guys. There you go. Let's see what you can do about that. Seriously, is there nothing else we can do? I guess we have to take Ion. Ion? Come on, take it, please. Take it, take it. We lost 2,000, which actually is really, really, really quite bad. <coughs> As this is going up, 3.51 every month. Not bad. Oh, come on. We are definitely riding this struggle bus here a little hard. Let's get a little more pony power for now. Industrial investments. Yeah, we could use more production units. Oh, good. These guys aren't great, but we'll still take them for now. Because we have to. Quite literally, because we have to. Oh, come on, man. You doofus head. Oh, you know the division, nice. <laughs> Excuse me. We don't have the pony power for it, so. That sucks. Make sure they don't get Magadon. Don't be dumb. And then, uh, observing the other world. When the Germans began their explorations of outer space, the main technique they used for analysis was the sending of rovers, small and manned space exploration vehicles loaded with analysis tools. To tell us about the other world, we'll do the same. Send rovers through portals the other way to explore and tell us more about the world from which the magic has also transformed our society from. Then, when the time is right, we'll send our own ponies to map this other world. The test. So it was finally time to fire at the portal for the very first time. Alexei Petrovich's subordinate, Fyodor Romanovich, nodded his head, his unkempt mane flowing in front of his face as he did so. Yes, we're running the final calculations now. We'll be ready to begin the first test at any moment. Alexei smiled. Now it's good as time to say any, no? He nodded his head to his subordinate. Let's begin. Once, at once, the room was lit ablaze with a blinding flash as a swirling purple portal flared alive, but just as quickly as the room was plunged into darkness. The room beyond the portal was dark, with only pitiful fireplace providing any source of light. The room was similarly sparsely occupied, with a single pony standing at attention and staring at the dark landscape beyond. She was purple, with a dark mane streaked with red, and wore what Alexei could have sworn was Russian imperial regalia. At the sound of the portal opening, she turned around slowly. Ah, she whispered, her voice hoarse as if from disuse. I didn't realize that I'd be receiving visitors today. I wonder who they are. Could they be emissaries of Celestia and Luna, perhaps, to tell me that they all be returning soon? Could they be, perhaps, she turned around suddenly, her eyes uh, manic, new friends? Alexei found himself swallowing reflectively, closed the portal. The pony on the other side of the portal began to glow, walking slowly towards the assembled scientists. The clock is ticking, after all. Celestia and Luna will return when everyone is friends again, including all of you. Close it, Alexei shot, slamming hoof down in the emergency shutoff. The portal winked out of existence as quickly as it opened, leaving the room in stunned silence. He opened his mouth, putting voice to the thought running on everybody's mind. What the heck was that? Play Equestria Wars April Fool's Tiano crossover in their mod, which I should. Searching for friends? Yes. Equestria is vast, containing developed societies of ponies, griffins, zebras, yaks, and apparently some other kind of insectoid creatures called Changeling. We must search for friends who may be able to help us with food deliveries, new technologies, most, but most importantly, with making friends after all. That's the basis of our ideology now, is it not? Is it not? Our divisions are quite weak. Oh, come on, dude. Fine, go there. Be a little party pooper. Not even one a day, huh? I hate Magadan. This is so difficult. Why is it so flippin' difficult? Why didn't they capitulate earlier? Magadan should be more than enough to capitulate these guys. Of course we lost it. Because why would we keep it? Why are these guys not fighting with each other? It doesn't make any sense. Why is it getting so god dang long? We should easily be able to destroy them. 
Ding dong, go there. Uh, reaction in a perfect world. Apparently, even in a near perfect world with almost unlimited resources, peace and harmony, the forces of vile reactionism persist in the parasitic feedings of the resource of the workers and peasants. Soon, other theorists are already hard at work explaining how reactionary beliefs, despite their rationality, or rationality, will find roots in civilizations with unlimited resources and scarcity to defying magic. As far as we should be concerned, however, all this means that we have to be careful when interacting with the nations of Equestria. Observing the other world. I was a scene he had pondered many times before. Uh, a peaceful city on the other side, tinted pink by the coloration of the crystal. It was a lively night over there, by the looks, with ponies chatting, laughing, prancing under a starry night sky. His presence unnoticed saw it all. There they were, his people now, he thought. Not his rule, rule to, not his rule, but in his in form and blood. Equestria, like he had seen it called on the signs before. How fitting for a land without man, but with ponies. From his point of view in Siberia, it seemed like a modern Garden of Eden where needed and want were banished and pleasantries exchanged. And like the Garden of Eden, it was closed off to him and his people. A portal would need to be made, but how? Surely it would involve these crystals in some fashion. Fission, perhaps, or maybe something involving this nebulous magic which permeated his world. All he knew is that it had to be have happened, that it had to be possible. How else would the first crystals have arrived on Earth? If nature could do it, then surely so could man and pony. He turned to his scientists, the finest in all of Siberia. They were a varied bunch, some human, some pony, but they all seemed eager to hear his words, comrades, as he began. We stand on the precipice of a great breakthrough in our history. With your minds, we should create a connection to Equestria, establishing harmony and inexorably linking our two worlds. Understand the magnitude of your actions and recognize that through your hard work. You will directly benefit all of the people of Siberia, of Russia, of the world. I know that you can do it. Get to work. We need crystals. Um, more output. Just, just more output. New entry, Dr. Owens. If you want to read about this, please go ahead as well. Bing. Bong. Bong. You ding go and ding dong. What is going on here? Well, that's one way to get rid of them. Force it. No, you're not. You, if you die there, you die. No ifs, ands, or buts. Actually, just go there. Cut them off. Oh my god, stop it with these god dang, god awful front lines. You're wasting time and precious manpower and resources. Because right now that focus is hurting us. Oh god, yeah, it is. Oh my god, stop it. Stop wasting your time with these front lines. At least these front lines that are a literal waste of time. You know how to move. Get your butts in there now. Come on. No. If you want to... You both go there, that deep ding-dongs. And then first, contact protocols. While our observations have led us to note certain interesting parallels between pony culture and our own, they're so different peoples with different beliefs and practices. We need to draft a set of protocols to govern our very first interactions with pony kind. First impressions are always the most important, and fumbling the bag this early would be a terrible mistake. My god, you couldn't kill them off? Jesus Christ, you stupid idiots. God, I hate humans so much. No, hold. Hold. Oh my god, if you want to go somewhere, then go there. You ding-dongs. Go there. Force it. I don't care. Either you win or they they win. My god. How are we struggling this much against god dang militia? This makes no sense, man. What to offer? Uh, what to receive? Oh my god, this ma this mod just lags so hard. Uh, what, do see? what do we just stand to gain from meeting with the ponies of Equestria? Will communication with them truly bring us vast benefits? If we can give them so little, will this relationship turn one-sided? Is it truly worth the effort to meet with them? We ask ourselves all these questions and more as we venture into the unknown. No, you're gonna for you're gonna keep doing that. They cannot recover if we just force the attack. My god, this sucks. This is terrible. Just, just do, for the love of God, just, just go win. Just win. Yeah, let's go with that one, too. Alright. How did we get encircled? Oh my God. Are you effing kidding me right now? 
first contact protocol. So let's run this through again, Corel. I don't know how you put this to you, Cranberry, but this is all beyond me. Why not send a pony to lead, like you, for example? There's nothing new in seeing a pony. They've never seen a man. You will instantly attract interest. Lord, that's a lot of pressure. Which is why I should be working extra hard on this. Now go over it again. You'll arrive in a street in town and surely cause a ruckus. Which is why our first impression must be perfect. You will arrive, stand straight in your posture, and say glory to the horseshoe and sickle. I'm Karel Borisovich, Boroskyuk. Of uh, the harmonious union at the command of Nikolai Ivanovich Bokharin. I hail from another world. We have heard of your might as a vanguard of socialism in this world. From one comer to another, I salute you. Take me to your nearest authority. That works mostly, but the last part makes me sound like an alien. You are an alien. Well, Alright, yes, I understand. That part's fine, but... When I say that when I arrive at this port of authority figure, I am to raise my hoof to them at an angle before snapping into a salute. It is misworded, but that's custom, yes, as far as we have seen. I'll look like I'm hiling. And I'm sure they'll find our customs as equally bizarre now. Will you continue to mock the traditions of our fellow communists, or will you cooperate? Fine. Good. Now let's move on to dinner etiquette. Jesus Christ, is that hey? Harmony? The points of Equestria have known for harmony. Uh, of harmony for all their lives. By contrast, we've only known harmony for a scant few years, courtesy solely of Comrade Buck Harn's vision. Naturally, this means the ponies of Equestria have a much greater and deeper knowledge of the harmony that we could have ever hope to have. This incredibly advanced knowledge could be a great benefit to us and only stand and gain from further cooperation. And I'm going to make sure... Unfortunately, I have to use cons commands, but this is really incredibly stupid the way this has been set up. And here we're at, everybody. Um, Magadon capitulated. I'm sorry I had to use cons commands, but I'm... I get sick and tired of this crap. Sometimes it's just completely unfair and just not fun. But, welcome volunteers from Magadon. The government of Magadon is weak and easy to dismantle. Better yet, due to its proximity to the Siberian North, some of them are already familiar with the concept of friendship and harmony that they are already ready to serve our cause. We welcome them with open arms to declare harmony victories over the fascists of Magadon. No thanks to the devs, white. What remains of the white army and old Tsars and the East have rallied themselves under the rule of Tsar Mikhail II, setting up Cheetah as their base of operations? Make no mistake, these white army remnants are a hardline militarists hoping to undo our work back in 1817. Harmony and peace could have never prevailed. That's really the case for all the tyrants and enemies of the Harmony. We'll have to stamp them out before the sake of everyone involved. We cannot allow these reactionaries to condemn Russia to the oppression that we suffered many years ago. That's going to take forever to get over there, so go and do it. And actually go. Uh, what to offer? In times of old, two distant civilizations would always begin the first meetings by exchanging gifts of valuable items from their homelands. We should do the same, of course, in a magical world. What we have may not be so valuable, so intellectual work, such as the Manifesto, or the foundation of text of our society, as well as books and papers on our highest mathematical and scientific advancements. So hopefully they'll be impressed. Maybe. These ponies are not that good at divisions. Oof. I mean, look at all this lag. Jesus Christ, why is it so bad? We can help the world out of pony power, but there's nothing else that we can do. I'll expand the ports of Magadan. Last phase of economic development. Yeah, might as well. Uh, we have to do... Which one? No, it's not great. Well, since we got them, we might as well use them. Friendship. The ponies of Equestria have so much, we have so little to give that they don't already have. They have more resources, more manpower, more magic. They have more of everything compared to our small share of the world. The only thing we can offer them is their everlasting friendship. We can only hope that that'll be enough. And I'll probably lose this war and have to cheat away to just make sure that we can actually not die. Are these guys still fighting each other? How are they still fighting each other? Huh. And again, with the whole um, update, what was it? No step back update, it really screwed things up. Especially for pretty much all AI. Wow. How are you still alive? That is impressive that you're still alive, actually. Yeah. If it takes this long to win wars, it's not fun. It's just really not fun. Oh, Unity. At the end of the day, one thing is clear. The unity of our two peoples can bring only bring good things. Together, we shall show the greatness of the world a uh, harmony. Together, we'll fight the force of hate and reaction. Together, the sum of our two parts shall be far greater than the whole. Together, friendship will be unstoppable. If we lose even more political power. What's the point of this? If we lose nothing but more manpower and whatnot. I'll support the attack. Well, let's get them done. Oh, nice, and they rightfully belong to us. Alright. Return Mikhail to Australia. Uh, is that it? No. Mikhail II was never the mastermind of its arts restoration. In fact, it was the white army that pulled the strings of the state, not him. We have eliminated a threat to harmony, and we have no whole grudges against Mikhail. It's time for it to grant him the rest he deserves with his loved ones back in Australia. Good. War plan Brown, Reconciliation is magic. Yeah, I could probably do that one. But yeah. Just the combat in TNO sometimes. It's just. It's so boring. It's not boring, it's just. It's so frustrating. Really flipping frustrating. Obviously, my divisions could be better from here and there, but like. 
Sometimes it's just not bueno. Just not bueno. I know I complain a lot, but still. Friendship. Some might say friendship is magic. Hey, not bad. New entry. Okay, Entry three. There you go. Blue Water Navy, because we can. Unity! Actually, can we do anything else here yet? No, let's wait to do the Unity thing. It barely gets. Our allies with the questions will not be completed unless they are able to come in peace. Visit us and offer them their wisdom in person. Hmm. What's a replacement for in person if we're talking about ponies, anyways? Pardon me, we seem to have gone somewhere distracted. That linguistic nonsense aside, we've endeavored to prepare. Some offerings and gifts to give the questions when we meet them. We can only hope they'll like them, but Comrade Bakarin believes with good reason that they will appreciate the spirit in which they were given above all else. Friendly farewells. Mikhail sat in a surprisingly comfy prison cell bed. Uh, reciting under his breath the Russian speech he had planned during his brief imprisonment, if he was lucky, he might get out of here alive. Suddenly, one of the horse things knocked on the cell's bars with her hoof, and said to Mikhail in a heavily accent English, The general secretary is here to see you. Mikhail quickly stood to attention as an equine figure approached him, and the cell door was open. The unicorn and these horses called their leader began to speak. Mikhail Romanov, your government has capitulated to the Union of Harmonious Socialist Republics. Mikhail was quick to drop to his knees, begging for mercy. Please, sir, have mercy. I never wanted to rule Russia. I never wanted to leave Australia. I just want to see. Mikhail was quickly cut off by the unicorn hugging him, or at least Mikhail thought it was a hug. The unicorn spoke in a comforting tone as he embraced the former Tsar. Do not worry, Mikhail. We don't want to hurt you. I, in fact, come to say that we're sending you back to your home in Australia. Mikhail could barely think of the, thank the unicorn for the news as he was blubbering so hard. He was finally going to see his family again to return to his home again. Nothing could have made him happier. Home was the nicest word there is. Well, you don't live at home. And you can never go back. Eh, maybe. Prepare the guests, ready to greet them. Not enacting another war plan, nor are we less than 40 days after the last one was enacted. So we can try this one first. And Brown, of course. Rozhevsky is undoubtedly the vilest of the Harband 3, adhering to an ideology so similar to Germany's national daddyism that it's almost indistinguishable. Him and his regime of fanatics are the true enemy of harmony and the people. And of course, ready to greet them. What do we thought? Looks like a heart. It takes that long just to get through that. Uh, where are we at? 80? Not bad. Ah, oh, one school is finished, and the time is coming to begin another. At last, we were ready. It took a lot of time with a lot of study. Books grew in stacks in the size of the old Muscovite skyscrapers on Comrade Bakarin's desk as he studied well into the next morning, day after day. Not even the comrades. Well, thus, responsibility were spared from these duties. We are ready now. We can meet them without making fools of ourselves. Well, this is taking forever, my god. Well, I want to mine the mines, but we can't quite do that. Feed the people? Not quite either. There we go. Actually, since we're here, we want to train. Can't even make any goddamn divisions. Come on. And then, introducing ourselves. Now is the opportune time. Under the supervision of Comrade Bakar, and we have built the portal to Equestria. The diplomatic service of the harmonious union has been primed. It is ready to begin his duties to win over our comrades in harmony. Let us therefore set foot in the next world and greet our older siblings in the harmonic way. For peace, freedom, and bread. Through the promotion of friendship and socialism. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Kill them all off. Kill each other off. Of course, we're still trying to expand the port of Magadan, which will be very nice, actually, once we're done with that. Next, ec next economic phase and more GDP, please. Where are we at? Still a lot of debt, but... Oh, wow, 42% is not bueno. Help, uh, we're kind of okay. Nice. Opening ceremony. Elena had descended from one layer of hack into another, from heresy to treachery. After long years of working within Yagoda's administration, after years of building the institutions of Irkutsk into something that man could or could restore the Soviet Union, she found herself seated near the map. She found herself at a round table with Yagoda, Salvin, and the beast Bakarin as the latter's assistant, as his expert on the dispute between the two men and a sign of his commitment to interspecies collaboration. Death would have been too good for mercy for her, but maybe if this was 
the sparse of a negotiation ended, she would have been rewarded with it anyway. Gone, friend, said the horse, banging its hooves on the wooden table. I know we all have disagreements about who is and isn't a deviationist, but there's no reason for us to fight when we can talk about our differences instead. You've both been stellar comrades, and I know we can all work as a team. There was silence. He go to stare at Elena and the pony with a withering smile or expression. Selvin buried his face in his hands and muttered something that sounded like, for God's effing sake. The creature of Bakharan turned to her with enormous eyes. It was impossible for those eyes to exist, for them to not immediately cave into themselves, but they bore into her nonetheless. I'm starting to think that maybe friendship and harmony isn't going to solve our problem here, he said in a loud song, sing-song voice, as if the two men weren't at the table. What do you think? We should definitely try to declare a war on both of them simultaneously. That'll fix it. Elena gave an exhaustive shrug. Negotiations continued. Go on, dude. See that one. We can go to war with them, but negotiations will continue. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Let's introduce ourselves. And the Treaty of Stalingrad. Oh, look at this. Our work has succeeded beyond our wildest dreams. We have reached a formal treaty with those closest to us in methods and worldview. Our esteemed comrades of Stalingrad, mind you. Comrade Bakarn does feel a bit suspicious of this steel stallion fellow, but he squelches his suspicions to preserve the harmony. With a formal treaty between the Harmonious Union and Stalingrad, our two peoples are now made ready to face whatever comes to us. A uh, model of decorum and tranquility. <clears throat> it's bad enough to sit next to a traitor in the suit of the socialist cause you go to spat glaring at Southam, but... The idea of listening and taking orders from a gosh darn horse, I mean, God, the effing absurdity. I feel like I'm in a gosh darn storybook. Selden let his hand slide from his face. His face was not that of a confident revolutionary, but of an exhausted man trying to keep hold of the last strands of his sanity. Garnick and I have had our disagreements, but in this case, I have to agree. This is too much, this is, he trailed off, shaking his head. Is this, is this any of this real? Of course it's real, said Bakaran, without an ounce of self-awareness. And there's one thing I've learned over the last few months, is that its real strength, is, real strength isn't about a powerful security state. It gave a look to Yagoda, or returned to true Marxist-Leninist principles. He gave a look to Salvum. It was about working together to achieve the great things. Isn't that right, comrade Padnova? You remember the first Alpulian's Congress, right? Alina opened her mouth in a fish-like gape, only for Yagoda to suddenly rise from the table and remove a gun from his waistband. That's it, I've had enough of this gosh darn insanity. At effing all pony congress, I cannot, I refuse, I don't know what the F you are, but you are Nikolai B Bukharin. You have five seconds to get out before I start firing. The other three members of the table backed away from the table, and their hands and hooves raised. Oh no, Elena, said the cloying voice of Bukharin. It looks like making friends with Comrade Goat is going to be a lot harder than we thought. What should we do? War, we should leave here and immediately declare war to Goat and sell them. I'm sure we'll end well. You should definitely keep talking to the madman threatening to shoot you. Ponytarian A program? Ooh. Sponsor local crystal businesses. Ooh. Open new streets. Do you mind? Some first. Brown. We got a cold brown. Oh, for A Chan. Thank you. Alright. Extremely high deficit, huh? Why? Oh, it's because of the Navy. Well, as much as I don't want the Navy, I don't understand why we get more and more from the Navy. <clears throat> Nobody sighed. Oh, there you go. And Buck Haran took a deep breath and, and trotted forward. The men with the guns. Sometimes friendship is hard and it takes work to maintain them, but what we work together, it makes all the difference. Let me show you. What is their debt? Just to then everyone's bafflement. Nikolai Bakarin, former general secretary of the Communist Party, the Soviet Union began to sing. When I started out, I was unsure. I thought I knew all that I needed, didn't know what to expect. But when my walls came down, I saw the truth all along something that was missing. And I think you'll see it too. What the F are you? Elena watched with horror, sobbed, and removed his hat and stepped away from the wall. Then, like a man possessed, he too began to sing. This is where communism happens. This is how communism lives. Our movements weave together stronger, the bonds grow deeper, lasting longer. And the greatest anthem we'll know is how the magic of communism grows. From nowhere there was now swell of music. Sparkles and visions of strange worlds filled the air. You go to scream, the gun quivering in his hand as he backed away from them as Bukharin's magic seeped into his mind. Elena had a moment to react. Shoot the skinwalker, Genrek, for the love of God. This is where communism happened. This is where communism happened. This is where... I'm kind of going a little bit insane here. Hey, the pirate's looking better. Even though we got a lot of poverty, right? Fresh hooves and a new world. A sensation flowed through Gennard from his muzzle to the tip of his tail soon as he stepped through the portal. The sensation was not quite a taste, not quite a smell, not quite a sound, but... Uh, <clears throat> uh, an amalgamation of all three. 
It made his mind feel foggy, as if there was a disconnect between his mind and the rest of his body, and yet, despite how unusual the sensation felt, it felt strangely familiar to Genric. It reminded him of his transformer. Before he could finish that thought, Genric was through the portal. In between the tall trees that surrounded him, Genric could see the rest of the squad. As Sister Masha was chewing taffy, I was looking at the trees with a relaxed look. Danila and Valentina were setting up the radio trying to get in contact with someone from Stalingrad, and finally there was Lieutenant Valukova. Pacing across the forest floor, biting her nails, shadowing by the diplomat named Karel, no one seemed comfortable in this new world. It was as if they were worried the trees would start walking and the skies would rain down fire. So, the brigade waited an uneasy silence for Valentina to find a signal. The pair was continuing to tinker with the radio when a voice sprang out from the machine. The static still remained, but the few words were audible. Ambush, River, Griffins, Genric, perked up from upon hearing that last word. From the debriefing of the brigade received before the mission, Genric knew that Griffins were greedy hybrids of eagles and lions, and impassable, implacable, foes of both harmony and communism. Suddenly, the sound of gunfire burst through the air, enunciating, or emanuating, I can't speak tonight, about three miles to northwest. Upon hearing this, Lieutenant Valu... Valukova ordered the brigade forward, marching straight forward towards the gunfire and to the rescue of Stalingrad soldiers under assault by the Griffins. Enemies fear for the pink guard is here. Mountain duet. And her mind, Elena, was far away from the room, far from the scene. She watched a Salvin and Bakaran sing and dance from about the valley of friendship. She watched as the Equine song hooked onto Yagoda's brain and the aging revolutionary joined them in a low, hoarse baritone. She watched them conduct complicated choreography and a wordplay without preparation or explanation. Now as the music died, Comrade could go to turn to the horse and said in a voice unlike his own. Thank you, Comrade. I see now that when we work together, we really can't accomplish so much more. I agree completely, said Salvin, wrapping an arm around his enemy, the man he vowed to destroy. His mouth seemed to move independent of his dull, glassy eyes. We've learned that friendship isn't always easy, but there's no doubt it's worth fighting for. The base pushed its way between the two men. It contorted its equine arms into an embrace. Its face shifted into a sim uh, similar crumb of a smile. I'm glad we could put aside our differences for Russia. We'll unite our statelets together beneath the common banner of harmony. We'll work together as friends, and it's all thanks to the advice of my good friend. She couldn't take it anymore. Elena turned from the scene and rushed away from the negotiation room. Guards looked at her in alarm as she passed, her hair wild and tears streaming down her face, but she didn't care. All she, she could think about was how Salvin and Goethe had fallen to the horse's tricks. All she could think about was how larger and larger swaths of her motherland found themselves beneath this way of a talking, singing horse. What fun is there in making sense? The harmonious oblast of Baikal should be formed under the leadership of United Harmonic Presidium. Holy crap. Path to Harmony. Looming Fiscal Crisis. Jesus Christ. Fresh blood on foreign soil. Genric pulled the trigger. A bolt of purple light shot out of the barrel, crystal case cartridge. Ejected out of the gun and advanced, the griffin fell in the span of a second. Genric shifted behind his cover to target another griffin. Pull. A purple flash. <clears throat> this time, the spell of his gun missed the target by an inch. Masha spelled it in, and the griffin went down with a squawk. Genric glanced around for another enemy, but he could find none in range. A few remaining griffins were talk taking to the wings and fleeing, weaving through the pine trees to avoid the spell fire. Lieutenant Valukova gave the orders to cease fire, and with that, Genric closed his lump body against a tree, sliding down until his haunch hit the forest floor. It was then that G Genric noticed that he had been shot, caught by a griffin's bullet in his left shoulder, looking for anything to take his mind off the pain. Genric focused on the hoof steps he heard around him. A particular pair of hoofsteps grew louder, and Genric could feel in the air that someone was next to him. Opening his eyes, Genric was greeted by an unfamiliar filly with a tattoo of a trumpet on her haunch. The filly paused for a moment before saying, I don't know who you are, stranger, but you and your friends helped us out when we really needed it. Thank you. The filly reached out a hoof to Genric, and after a moment, Genric brought out his right hoof to shake it. Looking the filly in the eyes and speaking with a grimace, Genric replied, Helping people is what friends do. Only 19. Amp up recruitment. New friends in the new world. It's not a tattoo. It's called a cutie mark. Every pony gets them when they're young, and they show them uh, show everyone, and they show everyone your personality. So why do you have a trumpet mark if you don't play the trumpet? Genric asked his Philly friend. Apparently, it's because I talk really loud when I get excited. So you're not excited to talk to me? Genric said teasingly. The filth Philly gave a smirk in response before she could reply with words. The crowded transport truck came to a halt. Seeing the other soldiers from Stalingrad exit the back of the truck, Genric followed them out and looked around. The trucks had been deposited them in a snow-covered field surrounded by tall buildings that reminded Genric of Irkutsk. To his right was an especially tall building, the top with a gigantic statue of a pony. Seeing it behind him, the filly yelled into Genric's ear, the ones called the Palace of Soviets. Returning the smirk he received earlier, Genric looked across the field to try and spot his squadmates. He spotted Masha sharing taffy with two Stalingrad ponies, Valentin, who had probably never seen a pony before, was being swarmed by native ponies, and Lieutenant Valukova was conversing with a dark-coated pony, with a blonde mane who also had a pair of bat wings, surprised at this sight. Genric thought to himself that he had a lot to learn about Stalingrad in this new world, but it was good to see that the bonds of camaraderie and friendship were already forming. Friendship is magic. Until you beat that friendship and magic to death. But that's okay, we don't talk about that.
I don't know. New entry? It's actually email A. How long is this? Is there like the regional stage we can get to as well? Come on, man. There you go. Kind of doubt we can win. The AI, AI is always seemingly very, 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 very ungodly strong. Look at that, too. A Chen. Third one. Not bad, not bad, pretty quick. More research speed? Because we can. How do they have so much manpower in divisions? They don't have any more manpower. Support artillery, maybe? Yeah. 18 combo width. Of course, we don't have that many divisions, but whatever. Did they attack us at all? Can we attack them at all? Probably not, in all honesty. Should easily be able to win, man. Bones aren't that weak. Do we need more support equipment? We're good -ish on guns. Support equipment, yes ish. <clears throat> ah, steel mills, infrastructure. Go that one first. Stenson. Bad so far. You know, I have a lot to lose. Are we not ever going to get an upgrade or something? Like, this is ridiculous. All the extreme fighting that we had to do and no upgrades? Bro. Oh, did someone declare war on us? What's going on? By call? Yeah, we should already be in the war. Ask for control, request forces. Do we really need to request control? Maybe. Excuse me. Come on. Supply-wise, we gotta move down here, take this area here, which is not a supply hub, which is a little disappointing, it looks like. Yes, please. Damage-wise, we're doing quite a good amount of damage, actually, of all things. Go with that one. Come on. Kill them all off. No manpower. Again, we have no pointy power either, but still. I don't know what to do that one. Maybe we'll just get 200 troops. Eh, go ahead. Why not? Get something a little different than normal. Take the capital if you can. How are you losing here? My god, these divisions, these pony divisions are just not good. Straight up not worth it. That, oh, George Wallace. Now I'm interested in that. Do we have any planes? We've got a radar up there. Uh, maybe a plane or two. No transports, never mind. We got a, what we call a waste of time. Of 
What the F are you doing, you ding dong? You worked so hard to get that towel to just to leave? What is going on? Are you effing kidding me? This is a very frustrating episode. Jesus Christ. Go in. You're not going to lose. I'm sorry, but you're not going to. Literally kill them till they all die. I don't care. And Moore should not be able to get this much manpower, in all honesty. Especially when we're giving, like, nothing. Worthless and useless. Can you stop going into there, you ding dong? I only attack where we have support, and I know that their manpower is really low. This is a very challenging. This is too challenging. At least when I'm not when I'm super tired at night and I have to record videos. Like it's I'm not here for a struggle. We'll probably attack here next. Go here and cut out that division in the north if we can. No. No. Not allowed to lose. How can you not win here? Good night, shoot, I got in here. But then again, we can kill that division off, probably, so. Force it again. I don't care what happens up here. Come on, get in there, get in there, get in there, come on. My god, they just move so incredibly slow. It's incredibly god awful. I hate the Far East, I hit so bad. How did you get a division here? Oh my god, are you effing kidding me? Ah. Just go. Just kill them all off. At this point, I don't care. We're gonna lose all the pony power that we have, but I, I don't care anymore. This is so frustrating. It's not fun. Gonna force the attack. Feed the people. What do we even have over for this one? Need to consume goods, construct speed. Good, kill them all off. Been wounded? Ding dong. Come on. Come on. This is so bad. How can you not win here? How do we lose a division? Oh my god. This is why I hate TNO. The combat is really just not good. Especially in the Far East. All I want is to take the god dang tiles. We can't even do that. We can't move. We can't do anything. It's a waste of time being over here. 
And our divisions are just started off as so god awful. It's not even funny. Amur is not this strong. I guarantee you, they're not this strong at all. Because I've played as Amur. It's god awful playing as Amur. It is one of the worst experiences I've had in terms of combat. In terms of story, it's some of the best. But my god, is it god awful in terms of combat? Dr. Owens. Oh my god. What is wrong with this? Seriously. Where's the capital? It's not there. It's not down here. Come on. Thank god. I'm sorry that I'm complaining so much, but this pisses me off to no end. Rojevsky, the true enemy of harmony, the revolution of the people, he must go. Nomly, the state, and the Bukharin do not condone death. A sentence, even against the heads of state, of our enemies, as it goes against the ideals of harmony. But the sheer vileness of his deeds are too much to be ignored. It's time for him to meet the gallows and avenge the people of Amur. Yeah, it's not worth doing this one. I mean, it's just so goddamn frustrating. It's not fun. And we lost a division for no, literally no reason. Right here, you can't even get any land option because you have to keep adding these stupid divisions. I don't understand why these pony divisions are considered special forces. Falling down, Dojewski could hear a little about the cheers of a crowd. Blindfolded hands tied behind his back, it was all too clear what was about to happen. He should have been scared, and instead he was simply lost. Ponies, he'd been defeated by ponies. His conquerors were a lesser race, so human in every sense. Yet they had destroyed his armies and conquered his nation. <clears throat> that was an impossibility. From the physical to the racial, as every logical thread had been left in tatters. <clears throat> a voice, a booming voice, began to speak to his left. While the ideology of harmony does not condone execution, we were always prepared to make the raider exception. In the case of Konstantin Rozhevsky, we have seen a pattern of cruelty and violence which unfortunately can have seen no reform. While controversial, we saw this as the only answer. The crowd exploded in applause. Suddenly, Rozhevsky felt his body leave the floor, as if falling in reverse. Hoping to find solid ground, he began to squirm and kick at the restraints. All he managed to push off was a blindfold. As the cloth fell from his eyes, he finally saw the crowd. There must have been an army of thousands below him, some humans, some ponies. The most powerful among them had beautiful horns, glowing with a magical power he would never come to possess. They were working together to lift him to the gallows. It was true harmony of the classes. The corporate dream which he had always imagined completed by an inhuman race. Then he felt it a rope, tightening around his neck, shining with a powerful glow, and wrapping up and twisting him behind him. Finally, for just a moment, he felt true fear, and then he fell. I mean, I guess I could have used these divisions, but how good are these divisions? Probably, maybe better than ours? Maybe? But, you know, I, we shouldn't have to use anyone else's divisions. We really shouldn't have to use any any other nation's divisions. So stupid. Technically, you can do the reunification, yeah. Get a research slot over to the administration. The Ponylon Harmonious Society um, will be known... Oh, so, so, so Socialist Republic of Siberia will be known as the Siberian Harmonious Socialist Republic. Stupid. Incredibly stupid. Yeah, no. Actually, there's more we can do down here, but... There's not. Uh, we're going to go and do external investments as well. That shops off just a little bit. Here. Pay debt? Yeah, that'll help. No more growth, no more deficit. Why does the naval... Oh my god! Okay, so the navy thing is whole glitched here. Because this kept increasing in expenditures. This literally makes no sense whatsoever. How does the navy keep rising in, in costs... When we don't have anything new that's new new at all. We've got one ship. That literally makes no sense. Sometimes I really question the dads of TNO. I really do. Um what else can we do here? Anything else? How many do we have? 90? So we can go for none of these except one, so it might as well go bigger go home. There you go. Jesus effing Christ. That was way too difficult. Way too effing difficult. That was just not fun. Oh my god, never again. And yeah, I should have used these divisions, but I don't care. I really don't. It should have just integrated this stupid thing with us. 15? Eh. Eh. Mm. You spent so much political power on the, on, or army XP on this, so... How do we unify before this group? Usually this group wins, wins first. Yeah, definitely some things I question here. Definitely question. Uh, what else do we have here? That just makes no sense. 
how a navy just keeps costing more and more and more and more and more. I don't think Tino has that much inflation, does it? Actually, do we need this one? Not really. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Eh, one day. Capture anything captured. Alright. Okay, outwards. Oh, we need that one too. So, let's see what, what happens after this one. But I apologize for being so negative. It's just... This mod is pissing me off so much. It's not even funny. It's not fun. Just not fun. Well, let's see. More deficit, of course. Now we have a lot more army expenditures. What else can we do about it? We have to have a lot of debt. Osaka explanation. Expedition. Um, our geologists, geologists have presented us with an interesting proposal. Within the archives of Rakutsk, all plans for a survey of the northern parts of Osaka have left and left collecting dust. They're expecting to find diamonds and other valuable minerals there, but like so many other great and ambitious projects that were supposed to be part of the Siberian plan, this too will unfell apart after the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union. They have a chance to turn these plans into reality. While it will likely be a long and costly endeavor, the mere prospect of finding a diamond deposit on the scale of Yakutsk is too tantalizing of an opportunity to miss out on. But the state is ready to allocate resources towards this project, the Army's engineer corps stands ready to pull those shovels into the hard and in inhospitable ground. The glimmering light and the desolate wastes. As it should be. As if flipping should be. If you're going to administration or expedition, you're going to read about that, please go right ahead. Because I'm not going to read it anymore. Region development, I just got this. Land reform, slight decrease scoring time. Um, Doesn't help poverty. Some of these do help poverty. Now we don't have a lot of political power. I didn't know if there's any more after the first or, first uh, region, so... I hate I hate the Far East. It's the worst area to ever fight in. So, once again, I do apologize, but... The devs really know how to piss me off. Mm, we gotta go ten here. We really do. All right, let's read this last thing. Hooves shake hooves on it. Well, today's certainly been productive, don't you agree, Comrade Bakarin? Said General Secretary Vasily of Stalingrad. Indeed, replied Bakarin, with a simple nod. A peaceful silence fell over the room as they examined their successful negotiations of a treaty between the two nations. Comrade Bakarin, I must ask, do you truly think your world is ready for your message, your revolution? From what you describe, it seems a very brutal world. I don't think it'll be very easy, but I think Earth is more ready than you might think. They say it's not the same as the people after all, replied Bakarin. How about your world? From what you've said, it seems not everything's as utopian as my visions made it appear. Vasily gave it a shrug. It's more complicated than you thought at first, but the ponies of Stalingrad are strong and dedicated to the cause. To the cause. We won't let it, um... Let the forces of reaction get the better of us, don't you worry? Well, that's all we have to discuss, and I think we should shake hooves on this alliance right now. I can agree more, comrade. With the powers combined, nothing will be able to stop us. Except, uh, some other things, you know? Such as, uh, <laughs> maybe devs or combat, you know? God-awful combat. Combat that makes you want to tear your hair out. Um, uh, ooh, we got 96 political power now. That's why the devs, no, no devs like me. Um... Reunification, prepare for war, that's be 69. I'm assuming we're going to get something else here? The base cost to do this decision is... Wait, the base cost to do this decision increased by 5. Oh. Attract crystal businesses. And remove GDP growth will increase by 0.02%. Eh, that's not very much. Yeah, we'll do that one, why not? Well, then that's what we're doing too. So, do we not get another focus tree? Ooh, that seems a little glitchy-glitchy to me, but... I guess not. So, if you enjoyed the video, even though I complain a whole bunch. Oh, no, maybe not. Anthem. That floor is called Bokharan at 10. The bakers at 11.30, there was TV crews trotting to Kutsk. Long strands of ribbon and garland hung from the lamppost. All was ready for the day of the national celebration. The Bokharan had ordered to commemorate the pacification of the Far East, the reunification of the Soviet Union under a new pink banner. Part of this revolutionary leader knew it was a mistake to get tied up so much in organizing the celebration. After all, he had st and st the staff had staff, an entire bureaucracy to manage events, still had found himself supernaturally drawn to the spectacle. Ever since his metamorphosis, he'd become obsessed with parties. He just loved all the smooshy, cutesy, wootsy, widow, Nikolai. <clears throat> The boy snapped, beyond, snapped him from the feverish thoughts. He suppressed a blush as the figure of the Rykov trotted into the view eye of a security assessment on the grand galloping gala, gala of Russian unity. There's been growing reports of human antipathy towards pony leadership, with, and with so many people arriving in the city, there's been concern that. But Karin wanted to take this warning seriously. When he'd been human, he might have limited the celebrations of focus on the business of security and administration, but that man was dead now. He had an insatiable hunger for balloons and party streamers. How the pink guard do an extra round of security checks on people arriving from Hal Bin and keep a close eye on anyone who wasn't in the first All Ponies Congress? We've worked too hard to not have some fun, as you say, Char Pony. Can we have a focus tree? Come on. Do, can we please have a focus tree? I was about to end the episode, but I want to end it when we begin the next focus tree. Oh, you're going to this good head. Come on. Come on. The Grand Galvin Gala was going well, almost surprisingly so, thought Rykov. There had been a steady arrival of happy ponies and befuddled humans into Irkutsk. 
<clears throat> Party members laughed and broke into songs in the governor's palace. There had been no sign of anti harmony extremists standing on the ballroom floor. All was calm. Rakoff let a breath of relief. He could relax. He looked around the room for a few, friend, few new friends to make. There's only one person not engaged in a conversation, a dark-haired human new woman with a wild hair clutching a pearl or purse in her hands. She was looking for somebody. A friend, said Rykov, trotting towards her. He cannot remember her name, but she looked familiar. I hope all is well for you at a celebration of the people's friendship. I'm Comrade Rykov. She shuddered and gripped her purse. You're not. Rykov was a hero of the Soviet Union, a man. Tears trickled down her face. Oh dear. I'm different, yes, but I'm still Rykov. Now I just committed to promoting a friendly government, one that solves conflicts with teamwork, one of state-issued cupcakes, and... Do you hear yourself? I mean, God, I'm the only person who realizes how insane this all is. Or oh, inane. All this talk of friendship, all this platitudes. She unclipped her purse. Her words tumbled out of her mouth. I came here for the skinwalker. I came here to end this farce, but I swear on my mother's grave that if you utter one more word about friendship, one more aphorism. Aphorism. Rykov thought for a moment. He looked at her with his enormous eyes. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. Elena Panova pulled a gun from her purse and fired into Alexei Rykov at point blank range. Oh, oh boy. We got up to another level of regional stage, but we didn't get anything more. Like, what the heck? Come on. She was aware of screaming. She was aware of the stampede. She was aware of her body tumbling out of the ballroom, out of the governor's palace, and to, out into Irkutsk. Elena Panova was running, howling past marred banners and half deflated balloons. No more ponies, no more ponies, she screeched in a maniac voice as she careened past the throngs of people. No more monsters, no more government run by beasts. A herd of foals scampered out of their way as she skidded down the road. Freedom, we will be free. <clears throat> It continued. <clears throat> her chanting, her ra rage breath. With each moment, she was aware of growing numbers of shadows overhead and behind. Pony cops blowing their whistles were converging on her, but she was determined to continue her chant. Freedom, horses will not control us freedom. What did it matter that Elena had failed to kill the architect of her heck, Bukharam? Her active violence against Rakhav had proven that the pastel monstrosities could be defeated. She had proven that the rules of this world did, still did apply to them, and their so-called harmony is not inevitable. She was sure that her act would inspire Russians tired of musical numbers and high-pitched giggling. With any luck, the people would awaken. They would rise against their four-legged oppressors just as they had the Tsars. She was trapped at the end of an alleyway, and they were right behind her now. The police, the oppressors, the ponies. With a wide smile, she pointed the gun at herself. You won't control us, we will be... From somewhere far above, a single horseshoe bonked Elena on the head. She wavered for a moment, dropped the gun, and collapsed. Yikes. Oh my gosh, what the heck. The ponies of Russia are there wary, the humans of the realm. We are not your enemies. Remain humble. It's completing this focus while also completing the pony's superiority will anger the ponies. Oh crap, ponies of Russia. Our harmonic society is inhabited by many ponies who bear a number of abilities such as flight, magical manipulation, and enhanced strength depending on what type of they are. More and more humans chose to take the plunge and become a pony every day and they are valued members of the society, but they are not happy. Ponies are different creatures from humans. They have differing needs as society is rapidly tempting yet struggling to fill so far and the slow rate of change is causing anxieties for many ponies who feel the system isn't able to help them. As such, there is a growing number of them calling for more changes to be made in their favor. The humans that remain. Our harmonic society is unsurprisingly inhabited by many humans, people of many different skill sets, shapes and sizes, all of whom have followed a different path in life that have led them here. A sizable amount of people have chosen not to undergo pontification, and they are valued members of our society, but they are not happy. While well, humans are the standard state of being in this world, many feel that society's changes in favor of pony kind are alienating them, advancing at a rate they're struggling to keep up with. As a result, there's a firm number of humans adamant in their cause that they are not left behind in the transformation of society. But now that we've gone to this part... We're going to show you in the episode. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. I once again apologize for being so ragey earlier, but this is just pissing me off to no end today for some reason. And I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll see what else this Easter egg uh, campaign has in store for us. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.